Hi everybody, my name is Patrick Mitchell. Uh, this is the Arduino Epic, and this is the first of many uh, project videos. Uh, currently this is on Kickstarter, and I've got five very, very basic uh, projects uh, up on the project page, which, which can be found through the Kickstarter link below. There are five pieces of commented code, and each works off the last. The first being just getting the Arduino Epic to flash a red LED, which I'm going to do first. Now these project videos simply act to show you how to set up the Epic and uh, the results of the project. The project code will itself is commented and uh, talks about how the code itself works. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the Arduino Epic to the computer, we're going to load the program, uh, I'm going to make the connections and we're going to see the result and we're going to do that for all five of these basic projects in this specific video. So the first project is called Wiggle Your Big Toe and the idea is that once you load the epic with the code and uh, and you make the connections that you'll flash a red LED and you might think oh great flashing a red LED not very exciting yes but that means that you're successfully communicating between your computer and your epic now in order to communicate between your computer and your, and your Arduino epic you need uh, to download the drivers for the CH340G uh, USB to TTL bridge, but I'll make another video for that. It's not overly difficult and uh, it's not necessary right now. So if you look up the code for Wiggle Your Big Toe, project number one, it says that we want to take P uh, GPIO pin 2 off the first processor. You can use processor chip B or A. These are both Arduino chips, the Atmega 328 P P uh, PPU. And we want to connect GPIO 2, which is located right here. I know you can't see the writing on the board from this angle, but uh, if you look down, you see GPIO pin 2 is right here and we're going to want to connect it to our red LED which is right over here. It's labeled uh, RLED right here. We've got some SMT LEDs over here red, green, and yellow. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the Epic to my computer and as you can see the uh, Bluetooth module is flashing. You can ignore that and you can remove it if you'd like. I'm just going to leave it in there for uh, for fun. And now I'm going to upload the code. As you can see, the Epic starts flashing uh, one second on, one second off, the red LED. And I can switch that to Y LED or G LED for yellow LED and green LED. But I'm just going to leave that there. That is literally project one. We've successfully loaded uh, our Epic chip A with uh, with a piece of code and it is functioning. Now before we go into project 2 I want to talk a little bit about the programming of chip A and chip B. On the left side of the board right where we connect USB there are three three pin headers here and underneath it says chip cell. It's for chip select. You might not be able to see that but uh, on the left they're labeled uh, RX1, TX1 and RS1 for um, receiver 1, transmitter 1 and reset 1. On the other side we've got RX2, TX2, and RS2. So what we want to do is we want to communicate and program chip A. We set all the jumpers to the left side to short the middle and left pins. And if we want to uh, program our right pin, we'll power our right chip, chip B, we'll re remove power and set these jumpers to the middle and right pins. So right now and for the first many videos we'll just be using chip A. I'd also like to mention that both chips have a reset button. So as you can see, uh, you don't have a great view because these potentiometers are, these variable resistors are in the way of the LED, but you can still see it flashing. If I press and hold the reset button on chip A, the software stalls, and as soon as they let go, the software starts at the beginning of the code. Before we go on to projects 2, 3, 4, and 5, I'd like to quickly mention one last thing, and that's uh, that if this project is funded via Kickstarter, I'll also be creating uh, um, schematic review videos that talk about the schematics of the entirety of the Epic. It will be uh, independent of these project videos, but uh, if the project is funded, I will be creating um, full schematic review uh, videos so that you can follow along and see how I design the Epic and how you could create your own electronics based on the Epic to go along with the programming that you're going to be learning. For projects 2, 3, and 4, we need the normally low button. Sadly, on the first revision of the Epic, circuit board, which is what I'm using for this video, I forgot to add in the uh, normally high and normally low connection jumper. That's since been added in, as you can see, on the PCB file, but not on the board. So right now, I'm just going to solder right here just to connect to it. Project 2 is called Inputs and Outputs, 
and it calls for the normally low button to be connected to GPIO3, which is right beside GPIO2, which our LED is, is uh, connected to. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn the Epic board to the side here so you get a better view of the LED. So I'm going to plug it in, and I'm going to upload Project 2. With Project 2 uploaded, we use an if statement saying, if the normally, button, normally low button is pushed, flash the LED. So as long as I'm pressing this, LED, pressing this button, the LED will flash. As soon as I let go, it will stop. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, to uh, upload project number three. Project number three works the same as project two, except for we've introduced the for loop and we've actually added in the three LEDs. So when I press the button, this sequence of LEDs will, uh, will, will turn on and off five times. One, two, three, four, five. And if I press it again, one, two, three, four, five. And I can change that number to as many as I'd like, essentially. And, uh, and so, but every time I press that button, the software waits until I press the button, and then it executes the for loop, which turns the LEDs on, on and off in that order. Uh, I've dictated it to be five times, but the, the code challenges you to change that. So, project four, which I'm about to upload, I'm going to keep the, there's no more, connections to be made, but I've changed the code a little bit. I've added a for loop, or sorry, a while loop. And what a while loop is going to do is it's going to stall the software. So I'm going to press the button, and the software is going to wait until I let go of that button to execute uh, the for loop. So for this project, um, I'm going to press and hold the button. And right now, the software is stalled by a while loop. The while loop saying, do nothing while this button is being pressed. So right now, the software is scanning and, and it's just waiting for the instant I remove my finger. While loops are great for, for all sorts of things, but I use them quite often for waiting for uh, the release of a button or the, or the end of an action. Project 5 introduces functions, and what functions are they are subroutines, well, reusable subroutines that we can call. And that's more exp better explained in the code than right here, but essentially uh, this code works exactly the same uh, visually than Project 4, only we've broken it down into reusable code. So in the while loop, uh, sorry, in the void loop, the main area of our code, uh, we've just called two subroutines. So the first subroutine is waiting for me to press the button, and then the while, the while loop, waiting for me to release. And once that function is ended, it goes back to where it was called in the while loop, and the second function we call um, the LED sequence. So the code is essentially two pieces of code that are calling uh, extra larger pieces of code uh, in the software. A little bit hard to explain again uh, from a visual point of view here, but more uh, properly explained in the code sample. So please check that one out. That's project five. So I'll press the button. Works the exact same way. So thank you for watching. Uh, I do appreciate it. Each, each project from now on will have its own video. I just wanted to quickly uh, show off this, these first five very quick projects that work to build on each other so you can understand uh, the syntax of a project how a project is formatted, you know, uh, if statements, uh, for loops, while loops, and, and functions. And functions are your best friend. Functions make your code so much easier to navigate, uh, so much easier to uh, troubleshoot, and allowing for you to reuse code over and over by simply calling a subroutine slash function. It just makes everything easier. And we'll be using functions for just about everything uh, relating to the epic. So. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out the Kickstarter campaign. It's linked below if you haven't already seen it. Um, if you're a supporter of the project, I can't thank you enough. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks for everything.